Hey guys, EBP Man here. Now in today's video, we're gonna be reviewing exercise tech that you can keep in your home to stay fit. Now, uh, if those of you who've been following the channel have seen hopefully a dramatic change in my appearance. I'm now 34 pounds lighter than I was um, during this period with a lot of us spending more time at home. And one of the things that I have to attribute that to is, and there's two things, um, eating healthier, watching what I eat, but then also I bike every day. And I've biked for many, many years, but I really lost that. I was doing more running and I had a knee injury and I shifted back to biking. And literally, bike every morning, at least 30 minutes to 45 minutes. And I found that this is um, not only gonna give me, I would say, better fitness um, and health, but it also gives me a better frame of mind. And today we're gonna be taking a look at a, a bike, another bike that I've been testing. And this is basically the Yosuda Pro Magnetic Exercise Bike. And I have to say, you know, having used this now for a little bit over a month, that it's a solid bike. Uh, and some of the things that are really important to me when I think about biking and the fact that I get up before everyone else does to work out in my living room, I don't have a special gym or special place, which I know a lot of us don't, is that it be super quiet. Uh, I don't want to wake up my wife, I don't want to wake up Nilda, and I don't want to wake up the kids. So having something that is quiet, and I am working out um, in front of a 123 inch screen, right, uh, doing my whole Peloton thing, um, is important to me. This bike, is ultra quiet and you have to check it out. So let's talk about the specs and we'll get further into the Yasuda Pro Magnetic Exercise Bike. Now for those of you who are considering getting on a weight loss journey or for those of you who are just looking for something to work out from home, uh, one of the things I really like about this specific unit is the fact that it supports weights as high as 350 pounds. So depending on where you are in your journey, on your health journey, this is gonna be really flexible. Now it also has a 40 pound flywheel. And at first, I really didn't think about how significant that was. And the flywheel is the wheel in front that, as you're pedaling, creates, um, it's, it's part of the process that creates the tension. And I can tell you, I can tell the difference. I, I have another bike that I've been using regularly, and when I get on this one, I find that the weight is a little bit higher, and I find that it requires less tension to get a harder workout. So it's great that it has this 40-pound flywheel. It also has a built-in display. So if you don't wanna to have to have a smartphone or anything else tracking your workout and seeing what's going on, you just wanna go real simple, this has a display that's gonna show you your exercise data. Now, we also talked about the fact that this is a magnetic system. And basically, instead of having something that comes down on your flywheel and push, pushes down, some bikes push down, and what they do is they create resistance by it pushing on it, uh, this uses a magnetic drive system where the magnets are the things that drive the tension. And it's pretty cool. You're going to see this close up that the magnets are not even touching the flywheel and it's creating that resistance, which means it also is super quiet, literally super quiet. So we're talking about below 20 dB. No one hears when I'm on the bike unless I grunt, right? Now, you also then have the ability to adjust the seats, the actual, the front of the actual bike, and really adjust it to what you want, right? And I have to say that the pedals themselves are also uh, caged, so you can put your foot in, and it basically has a little kind of like boot that when you put your foot, on, foot in, you can actually tie it in. And they're actually very, very good. I've actually seen some companies that don't have um, some really good caged, I would say, pedals that you can use and adjust. Now, because it has a that the flywheel, the 40 pound flywheel. And because of the construction, which you're gonna see is pretty solid, has a lot of adjustments on it, you're talking about an 86 pound system. That's pretty heavy. But it's also very easy to move around. So again, I use mine in my living room and uh, we use our living room also to watch movies, right? You don't wanna bite there all the time. And I have it on a mat that the dogs have chewed up, but I have it on a mat. And when I'm done, I'm able to tilt it and move it over to the side effortlessly. More importantly, this is something that also Nilda can move around as she uses it as well. So um, 86 pounds, but easy to move around. Now having ridden a dozen or more bikes, uh, I have to tell you that you can tell the difference when you are riding the Yasuda Pro. And I would put it um, very similar to like if you're driving different cars. Um, have you ever gotten in a, in a car and you know that it's cheap? It just feels cheap. Like you get in, you sit down, uh, you turn it on, 
you know, the noise that you hear on the outside, the steering column, the steering wheel, the, the seats, you just feel that you're in a very expensive, inexpensive uh, vehicle. Well, when you get into the Yasuda Pro and you sit down on it and you start getting ready, you can actually feel the quality. And it's kind of crazy, but you can actually, you actually do, especially if you use other bikes. Uh, this is a super solid bike. Um, like I said, you can adjust the steering or the handlebar, you can adjust the actual seat. And the seat has a super, a little bit too comfortable for me. It has these little springs that as you're pedaling, it kind of goes from left to right, it does one of these things. I, I like a firm uh, seat. When I'm sitting in the saddle, I want it to be firm and I don't want it to shift. But I was like, ooh, this is different because it has kind of like those little springs there like a traditional bike. Also, it is a soft material, uh, which gives your tush, you know, some, some, I would say some comfort, especially if you start riding and you haven't ridden in a very long time where this is the first time, it's going to get sore a little bit as you're sitting and riding a bike. So as you sit in it, you'll notice a difference. As you put your hands on the, uh, on the actual handlebar, you're going to feel the difference. It feels really good and it feels super sturdy. Now the pedals are also super smooth and silent. We already talked about how important that is for me and my family. Everything in this scooter, in this not scooter, but in this bike feels top grade. And I have to tell you that I've seen a lot of, of these bikes. I've tested a lot of them. You don't always see them all get on the channel because they don't make it to the point where I'll publish because I just don't publish everything. I publish the things that are good. This one, I'm publishing. Uh, they didn't skimp out in any area, right? Except I'm gonna talk about one thing that I'd like to see different. The pedals are top grade. They feel great for this price point. They basically uh, don't squeak. There's no noise because I've either found that the, that the actual bike squeaks somewhere when you're moving it and you're pedaling or in, on the handlebar or the seat, nothing. And the pedals are super smooth. Again, I would almost put it to the point where we described how when you are driving a more expensive car and you give the gas, how smooth it is. Because of the magnetic drive system and that flywheel, it is super smooth and it feels high end really, really think that they did not skimp in any, uh, in any of the places. Also, when you think about the wheels in front, the ones that you use to move the, the actual bike around, those are also really nice. And I literally have great bikes that have, you know, a great frame, but then the pedals are bad or the wheels in front are bad and I have to switch them out. Don't have to do anything with this one at all. Now let's talk about um, the only negative I found, and this is going to be a personal negative, right? It may not be a negative for you, and that is the lack of Bluetooth. It does not have Bluetooth, and it doesn't have an app, and I like to be able to track things on my phone. I personally enjoy having an app that I can use to track my workouts, and I felt that not having it was something that uh, I missed and I wish that they have. I don't know if this is going to be something they can add on to this bike later, but that's one of the negatives I have. The other thing is that while it has a super legible screen, it's, it's legible when you have light. Now, because I'm working out before my family is up, I tend to keep the lights out. I, I kind of work, you know, the only source of light is coming from my TV or, or my projector. And then what I have is maybe some of the lights that are coming in. And because it is a, um, you know, one of those LCDs, the black and white LCDs, it could be difficult to read if there isn't good sunlight or lights. Now, if you turn it on and you have a lit area and you're working out in a lit area, you're not going to have any problem whatsoever reading uh, anything at all. So that's, I would say, is, is for me the negative. Um, wish it had Bluetooth and wish that it was something that was easier to read when it was darker. But I understand some of the decisions because the actual LCD is battery powered. And if it was lit, it's gonna eat the batteries up really quick. Now the Suda exercise bike is very configurable. You can adjust the actual handlebar forward or back right here, and you can slide all the way up to here so it can go out pretty far. You can also adjust the height, right, to your specific, um, I would say, body type. You also have your tension control knob that you see right here. And the neat thing about this is that if you want to stop, you push down and it will stop. So you have a push down to stop uh, button here. And then as you turn it to the right, it's gonna become or have more tension. And as you turn it to the left, what you'll have is less tension. So once again, uh, push to stop, then turn right or turn left. Now, as you're turning it right or left, the very bottom here, you can actually see the magnets, right? The magnets, as they get closer, they're gonna cause more resistance, which is uh, pretty neat. 
Now you do have a water holder here, so you can put a water bottle here if you'd like. On the back, you also have the ability to adjust the seat, right? So here's an adjustment knob where the seat goes forward and back. Uh, here you can actually adjust the height. And as we mentioned, this is gonna be supporting up to 350 pounds. Now, let's take a look at, again, the pedals here. So the pedals, I think that these are really nice. So each of them are labeled so that when you uh, connect them, you know which one goes on which side. Uh, you can uh, maintain this boot on. It has two screws here where you can remove them if you'd like so that if you're not into having um, your foot secure and you just like to pedal normally, you can do that. It's just two screws right there. Uh, however, this is really easy. Uh, very easy to use. All you do is you push the side right here and it kind of opens and closes and then you have the adjustment and then when you let it go it locks into place. So literally you don't have to get off your bike in order to adjust it either way. All you do is you pull it up or you pull down to tighten up to loosen. I really like how that works. The other thing is that they're super quiet so there's no noise. So you'll notice I'm moving it around and all you can hear is my hands touching it and maybe the plastic or the, or the metal actually, you know, as it's clinking because it's touching something. But when you have your feet in there and this is like this with tension, you hear nothing whatsoever. Now, on this side over here, you're going to notice that this cable, this cable system actually runs throughout the bike all the way to the back and it feeds this controller, which we're going to take a look at a second. That's going to tell you everything about the bike. Now on each one of the sides, what you'll notice is that there's some orange knobs. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the orange knobs so that you can see what you can do because they're actually levelers. And then we're going to take a look at the seat itself. Now when you receive the bike, there's very little to put together. Uh, literally all you have to do is put these two screws or these two bolts here in the front and the back and that is your base. There's nothing else really to do outside of the seat area and then the actual handlebar. Uh, but one of the things I really like is this adjustment area. So if the bike, or in this case, let's say the floor in your home is not level, you can actually adjust the level of the actual bike base itself so that it is more comfortable during your ride. So it has adjustment in the front and in the back. Now it also has some front facing wheels, which we'll take a look at, and those wheels are going to allow you to move this very easily. Now the wheels themselves are softer wheels. Um, I've been dragging this around the house and I still haven't noticed any kind of marring on my floor and that's really important to me uh, because uh, some of the wheels that I've seen on the market will cause dents on the floor. So make sure you check that out uh, just in case the wood that you have on your floor is a little bit softer. But it, you'll notice it has a little wear since I've been moving this around a little bit. The wheels are also very quiet and when you're going to move this around all you do is you tilt this forward, right? And you notice how it tilts forward just like that. Once you tilt it forward, the weight of the bike goes on the actual wheels and then that allows you to move it around. It doesn't really take a lot of effort. Remember, we talked about that this is a little bit on the heavier side, uh, but just lifting it over and you can see that I'm not putting a lot of force into it. I'm just tilting it forward, how it kind of moves forward. The nice thing also is when you're riding, it does not really shift. So you don't have to worry about tilting over. I find that the width on the front and the back, it's wide enough where even if you're out of the saddle and you're pedaling, you have no problems. Now, as I had mentioned from a seat perspective, it is very comfortable, it's a soft material. It does have the support um, right here in the middle, you know, the, that separation. Uh, you also then have the springs. And as I squeeze on each side, you can see how it shifts. Uh, this is what I was mentioning that I'm traditionally used to having a solid saddle and one that doesn't shift. Uh, you can get used to it. It's comfortable. It's, uh, it's not bad, but it's also a little bit different than what I'm used to. Um, all in all, though, it's a comfortable seat. Now, the exercise bike does have a tablet holder where if you want to put your phone, um, it is expandable, which is really nice. Uh, and then this is the actual control itself. Uh, you can um, go through the menu system uh, really quickly to see what your last workout was. You can see how much time you spent on the workout. Um, it does get connected through this cable. Now, you don't have to, I have a mine fish through the side because I've been just testing some things, but typically what I would do here is I would not have it coming on this side. I'd bring it through the handlebar behind it and then I'd fish it through here so that it would come up behind it. Um, it is removable, so you can just remove it like this. And if I wanted to change that really quickly, right, all I have to do is do something like that. And now it's gonna come from behind. But what I would do is I would disconnect this cable that's right here. Um, and then what I would do is fish it through here so that everything is nicely in place. The only negative about doing that is if you find that you're moving this forward and back, I would not fish it through there because you don't want this getting caught or bent. So 
My advice, keep it out just like I have it right here. You can hide it behind if that's something that you want to do and then you can work with it. Now, because I have lighting, this is very illuminated, but my room doesn't have any overhead light. Uh, so when I am working out, it's a little difficult to see. Now let's take a closer look at how the magnetic uh, tension works. I'm gonna go ahead and lower or increase the tension. You can notice how it's going down slightly. You can notice not the entire magnet is touching. I'm gonna go ahead and release, release it. See how it goes up, all right? That's all it takes. Now, I'm gonna turn the pedal so you can see how it works. And more importantly, listen. Can you hear anything? Super quiet. That's what I love about this bike. Super quiet and also, it's pretty hard. So guys, that wraps up our review of the Yasuda Pro Magnetic Exercise Bike. I'll see you in the next video.